It's day 16 of the Walk Off the Weight series for women over 50, and today we're getting 2,000 steps in with a walk with some boosts. No equipment needed, so let's go. All right, killer bees, let's go ahead and get moving and grooving, and that means that we're getting started with some arm circles with high knees. Oh my goodness, that first one always feels so good. There's something about the first arm circle that even though, I mean, it makes my shoulders work, it always just relaxes them because I know what's coming next. It's gonna be a great workout, and welcome to it. You guys, I'm Paula B. I am your best middle-aged fitness friend, and around here, we are walking off the weight the entire month of January, and today, today we are really, truly walking. I do have some bursts for you because that keeps it fun and interesting. But today is mostly a very walking day because I want to talk to you about your feelings. <laughs> I know, I know that some of you are like, mm, maybe I can turn this one off. <laughs> But I will tell you that talking about and thinking about your feelings about this weight loss journey is actually a really important part of what we do around here. As you well know, on the five steps, the five keys to excellent health and weight loss, the fifth thing is managing your mind, really thinking about what you're thinking about. Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. And today we're going to talk about what you're thinking about your weight loss journey. Now here's what it looks like. I've got the handy dandy gym boss here. Set to go off every minute on the minute. This is a particular, it's a particularly fun workout for me. It's called an EMOM workout because it's every minute on the minute. It has nothing to do with being a mom. <laughs> it has nothing to do with really anything. It's just kind of a silly acronym. But every minute on the minute, we're gonna do 10 seconds of something, a little burst of something. Now here's the thing, because this is mostly walking, you are absolutely welcome to do with the walking whatever you would like to. If you'd actually like to do the exercises that I'm doing for 10 seconds a little bit longer, or walk around your room, walk around your basement, walk around your whatever, help yourself to that. You can always, always make these workouts work for you. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes, because welcome to my home. Hi Blossom, y'all right? Yeah, she's just licking her foot. It's all good. It's all good. Blossom's not doing any walking at all right now. She's just hanging out and relaxing. She hears me saying her name though, so I'm gonna stop that, because otherwise she'll get nervous and think that it's time for a W-A-L-K, which, by the way, it totally is. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get moving and grooving. Oh, the other great thing about today, let's go ahead and start walking. The other great thing about today, mostly, I mean, there's always great things. There's never any jumping in any of these workouts. There's never any transitions to the ground in any of these weight loss workouts. Today is also super fun because it's no repeat. So my, my thinking when I created this workout was, first of all, that I really wanted a chance to just kind of talk to you about your thoughts and about your feelings about weight loss, but also is that I chose some exercises that we can really actually kind of burst with for the 10 seconds. Now I know that lots of us who have worked out for a long time feel like we have to bring intensity to our workouts and this one's for you my friends when it beeps. We're gonna do goofy jacks which is like it's not really a squat it's like a little bit of a, a little squatito and then our hands are gonna do jumping jacks while we kick one foot out to the side at a time. I'm only in 10 seconds I'm probably gonna do like what two or three of these here we go a little squat hands come out foot comes out boom nice job and I'm taking this with a little bit of intensity. It's meant to be, and then right back to walking. It's meant to be kind of a burst. It is not meant to get your heart rate up so high, burn a ton of calories, boost your metabolism, all those things that all of us fitness trainers talk about. Those things are gonna happen anyway. No matter how slow you are doing anything, no matter how low intensity of something you are doing, if you continue to do it over time, your heart rate will continue to raise over time. And that raised heart rate, even a little tiny bit, raises your metabolism. That's what that means. Raised metabolism simply means that your heart rate has come up a little bit. There are other ways to do it too. I mean, like when you have a fever, that actually raises your metabolism too because your body is warm. So it's like burning through things faster. When you are sick, your body is burning through things a little bit faster. Here we go with a punch, punch, kick, which is exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna punch, punch, and kick. Oh, get some aggression out on this one. I love it because it's only 10 seconds, punch, punch, and kick, and then right back to walking. And again, you're welcome to walk around. I'm just, I have a, I have a small area here and a camera set in one place. I suppose I could kind of walk to the side, walk to the other side. I could do that. That's cool. 
point of beeps again, let me tell you right now, we're gonna do ding dongs, which means that our hands are gonna be swinging from side to side, low, meaning not over your head while we kick out one foot at a time. I happen to love that exercise, because that one, I can really get rocking and rolling. But let's talk about your feelings, my friends. We're a little over two weeks in. How's it going? Have you lost one pound? <laughs> Maybe like a pound and a half? Are you already thinking, hey, this is taking a long time and this is hard and I don't like it and I really wanna work out harder or I really don't wanna work out at all or I'm having a hard time counting my calories or there's no way I can drink that much water. Here we go with ding-dongs, Wee! Really get this one rocking. A little bit of a burst, a little bit of fun, a little bit of extra. <sighs> then bring it on back down to walking. Now here's the thing, the walking in and of itself is plenty of burst, plenty of intensity to your day. We don't actually ever have to do more than this. I mean, I've already told you, you don't have to work out at all to lose weight. Like the workout is not how we lose weight. The workout is just how we have fun. We have a good time with this, which is why I chose the 10 second intervals to just burst a little bit of fun. I'm gonna beeps again. We're gonna do forward hinge arm flappers, another one of my favorites. I'm probably gonna say that about every exercise today. So I'll just tell you now, these are all my favorites. But here's the thing about those thoughts. The thoughts that you have create feelings. And I know you've probably noticed that before, but sometimes, sometimes we think that our feelings come from, from out there. Here we go with forward hinge arm flappers. Really get your hands flapping. Get your booty moving backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards while we burst with this fun exercise. And then here we go right back to walking. Nice job. When we think that our feelings come from, for example, the number on the scale, it's something that's really common. I actually hear that a lot. The scale made me mad. The scale is making me frustrated. The scale made me happy. The scale actually doesn't do anything except measure your weight. It's like, like the scale has one job and it is not responsible for your emotional fortitude. It is not responsible for your moods. It's not responsible for you in any manner. It just gives you a number. It shows you how much gravity you are resisting or the other way, I don't actually know how to phrase that every time. I always talk about resisting gravity, but I don't know if that's an exact thing to say. I'm gonna look that up. Anyways, when it beeps again, we're doing upside down jacks, starting with your hands over your head. As your hands come down, we're taking a big step out to the side. Boom, out to one side, boom, out to the other. Nice burst of activity here, a little bit of lateral movement. Whew, and when it beeps, coming right back to walking. Nice job. The scale's job is to show you what you weigh. Your job on this journey is to manage your thoughts about that. And the best way to manage your thoughts, honestly, is to notice them. When you step on the scale, what most of us do, we'll step on thinking something along the lines of, gee, I hope the number has gone down. And then depending on what the number is, we'll have a thought, something like, oh, that sucks, or hooray, that's amazing, or something in between. When it beeps again, we're gonna do reach across, which is exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna reach across our body while tapping out the other foot out to the side. Nice and big, nice burst. The thing about that thought, depending on which way it goes, is it creates a feeling in us. Here we go with reach across, nice and big, nice burst. And then when it beeps, we'll get right back to the walking. And that feeling, if it's good, sometimes we can hang on to it for a while. Here we go back to walking. Sometimes we can turn it into a good mood for the rest of the day because we have thought something like, hey, everything I'm doing is leading towards my success. This is a great day because everything that I am doing is getting me the results that I want. On the other hand, if the number didn't do what you wanted it to do, you might think something along the lines of, Nothing is working, nothing will ever work. I've always had trouble losing weight. I knew this wasn't going to work. And you can turn that into an entire week's worth of bad moods because of what you think. Now sometimes, this is something that I do. When it beeps again, by the way, we're gonna do high hand oblique crunches. Hands are gonna start up, up high. We're gonna bring our opposite elbow down towards our opposite knee, nice and big, nice and fast. Sometimes what happens when I have, here we go, high hand oblique crunches, nice burst of activity. Whoo, doggies, good job. When I have a, a thought that creates for me, here we go back to walking, that creates for me a disappointed feeling, 
Sometimes, rather than listening to that thought, I simply try and shove it away. No, it's okay. I knew this was going to take a long time. No, it's all right. I'm doing all the right things. Everything's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Try and reassure myself. Try and tell myself something positive. Try to think positively. Try and find the silver lining. But I will tell you that there is no silver lining to be had that is going to do you as much good as actually listening to what you are thinking when you get on the scale. When it beeps again, we're doing squat jacks. You do not have to squat. Help yourself to any kind of a kick that you would rather do instead of a squat if you would prefer not to. For me, when my hands are down, my hips are down. When my hands are up, my hips are up. It's a, a squat it down and come on up. Hands are doing jumping jacks. Lower body is either doing some kind of a kick or some kind of a squat. Nice and quick, nice burst before we get back to that walking and yes, still talking about your feelings. <laughs> And here's the thing, I know that this is really uncomfortable for lots of us. I totally get that. I have actually, I am a girl who has been in touch with my feelings my entire life. I have been told numerous times in my life that I have too many feelings, but I have come to the conclusion at this lovely age that my feelings are actually my superpower. When you notice that what you are thinking creates what you are feeling, you have just held the key in your hand to the biggest power in the world. Your feelings drive your actions and your actions are how we get results. When it beeps again, we're going to be doing dancing X's. Hands are going to be out nice and wide, feet out nice and wide. We're going to crunch and meet in the middle. So we're making a big X and then we're crunching and meeting in the middle. Nice burst, nice and quick, pulling in your core, making sure that you're moving with precision and care even while we are bursting and then right back to walking. When you know that you can actually create your own mood based on what you are thinking, it gives you some amazing power. But here's the thing, that automatic thought, the one that you would rather shove away, the one that creates for you a negative feeling of frustration or anger or sadness or, or whatever about your weight loss journey, that thought is in your brain. And we can't simply think another thought and replace it really quickly. You need to actually hear the thoughts that your brain is offering you that are creating for you these moods. Frustrated, angry, sad, or happy and excited. That happy and excited, you can replicate that anytime you want to. Here we go with twisting kicks. So <laughs> we're twisting while we're kicking. And I'm trying to do twisting high knees instead because I was thinking, whew, doggies. All right, <laughs> coming back to walking. I was thinking very hard about the things that you can think to create success in your life. Here's the thing. You can actually think anything you want about the number on the scale. And I know you know that when you're trying to tell yourself, oh, it's not that bad. It's just number, it's just data. And that's good. But I want you to actually hear everything you're thinking. The things you're thinking automatically that you're trying not to think. Those are actually really important information for you. Because it's what your brain is just simply offering you as though it is the truth, as though it is a fact. But it's not, it's a thought, just like every other thought we have. When it beeps again, this time I'm gonna tell you ahead of time. We're gonna do drinky bird jacks. We're gonna do our hands are doing jumping jacks. Our lower body is doing drinky birds. I know this one's your favorite. Feel free because this is just a burst to just tip over a little tiny bit. We're not trying to do this with precision. We're not trying to be amazing at this. It's just a little bit of practice, a little bit of burst. And then here we go right back to walking. My friends, my friends, your thoughts have so much information for you and very, very little of that information is actually true. <laughs> I know that that sounds like such a funny thing to say, but you know, you know, let me give you this example. You hop on the scale. By the way, when it beeps again, we're doing walking starts. We're reaching forward, stepping forward, reaching up, stepping forward with the other hand, reaching up, and then stepping back, reaching down, stepping back, reaching down. Changing leader leg and leader hand each time we get through it. We're only gonna get through like two or three of them. When you step on the scale and see a number, for you, that number represents some either the same or difference in something that you have been for a while. Here we go with walking stars. For somebody else stepping on the scale who weighs something different than you normally and has for a while, that number, here we go right back to walking, that number 
might be so significantly lower than anything that they have seen on the scale for years that they might be ridiculously excited to see that number that's making you feel angry. That's how you know that the thought that you're having is just an opinion. <laughs> Every single person who gets on the scale and sees that exact same number will probably think something different about that number because of their own experiences in life. That's how you know that it's, it's an opinion. It's something that you're thinking, honestly, possibly temporarily, when it beeps again. We are doing low swinging heel digs. Oh my gosh, okay, so this is a new exercise for me and I really have to think about this. So we're swinging low while digging that heel out front. Your hands are swinging side to side, one foot, tap it on that heel right in front of you. <laughs> this one's gonna make another appearance sometimes. And then right back to walking. I liked that one a lot. That was super fun. I like it when I make up new exercises, you guys, especially when we can try them out for just a couple of seconds and I can see like how that felt. <laughs> it's the small pleasures in life. And see, here's the thing. You might've had a completely different opinion about that exercise. Maybe you hated it. Maybe you were like, oh my gosh, I did not get the hang of that in 10 seconds. That was the worst thing Paula's ever done. And for me, I was like, oh, that was super fun. Everything that you think about pretty much anything is an opinion that might change over time. As we do more of those low swinging heel tappers or heel digs rather, you might grow to think that that is the most fun exercise in the entire world. When it beeps again, we're doing skiers. Hands are going up and down right in front of us. Feet are shuffling back and forth underneath us. Nice and quick, whoo, getting those hands up. Helps keep your heart rate up. My heart rate is already up very nicely. Thank you very much. I'm not really working too hard on that because as I mentioned, right back to walking, Anything that you do at any intensity over time brings your heart rate up. My friends, my friends, start to notice your opinions about things. Start to notice what you think about what's going on with your weight loss journey. And definitely start to notice how what you think creates what you are feeling. When it beeps again, we are doing wide open side kicks. So hands are gonna start here at our chest, gonna open our hands nice and wide while we are kicking one leg at a time. Of course, not both. <laughs> that would be so fun if I could actually like get some real air. I, there's no way I could though. <laughs> but one leg at a time, kicking out to the side. <laughs> And here we go. When I was younger, I mean, even when I was younger, I wouldn't have been able to get my feet out very, like very wide. I know that some people can do like jumping splits. I was never, here we go back to walking. I was never that flexible ever, ever. Nor was I ever an especially high jumper. Like I don't mind jumping. It's not my favorite. And that's why I don't include it in my exercises anymore. I truly, I don't, I don't miss jumping exercises because I was never like amazing at it. I can still do it, but I don't find it to be very necessary. I mean, as we mentioned, your heart rate comes up no matter what you're doing. Why not keep it nice and easy on your body? When it beeps again. Oh my gosh, we've only got a couple of these left, you guys. We're gonna do windmill tap backs. Our hands are gonna be nice and wide. Feet are gonna be nice and wide. Reaching your opposite hand down towards your opposite whatever you can reach. Maybe it's your thigh, maybe it's your knee, maybe it's your shin, maybe it's all the way down to your toe. Totally gonna depend on your flexibility, your strength, and how fast you want to be moving. If this was a flexibility, here we go, windmill, and then tapping that other foot back. If this was flexibility, and I was taking my time to be flexible, I could probably get closer to my toe, right back to walking. But because it's a burst, I wasn't really trying to get down all that far. You guys, you guys, the next time it beeps, I've got one final thing for us. Actually, that's not entirely true. So I've got one final like cardio burst for us, but then of course, after we're done, you already know we're not finished. I'm not gonna surprise you with that. So the next time it beats, we're doing pretzel jacks. Hands are doing jumping jacks. Feet are just twisting in one at a time. Obviously not both, because again, we're not trying to jump. <laughs> one foot twists in and then comes back down, and then the other foot twists in and comes back down. Making a little bit of a pretzel, half of a pretzel at a time. Oh, I should probably call them half pretzel jacks. But you know what? I'm committed to pretzel jacks now, so it's done. It's done. I'll never change my opinion about that. <laughs> Except that I totally could. You guys, I have, I have like really old videos. I mean, you know, I've been on YouTube forever. Here we go with pretzel jacks. I've been on YouTube forever. When it beeps again, we are coming back to walking, by the way. But <laughs> been on YouTube long enough 
that I have some really old videos. I'm actually going to really, really, really bring this down. And here's what we're going to do. So I'm bringing this all the way down, trying to bring my heart rate down a little bit. And we're actually going to walk slowly through that 10 second burst of the next time it beeps. And then what's going to happen is we're going to do some balance work, of course, because it's our finisher. We're going to do super slow can-cans. I'm really enjoying this super slow thing that we're doing because I really like taking what is essentially a cardio move and breaking it down and turning it into a balance move. You guys, everything we do is balanced. Like walking is balanced. So if you took walking slow enough, you're standing on one foot for however long you want to stand on one foot. All of the low impact exercises we do because we go one foot at a time. We've always got at least one foot on the ground. Here's our 10 seconds. And then when it beeps again, we're doing super slow can cans because we've oh, you know, we're not jumping with both feet off the ground. Everything we do is balance. So knee and kick and then knee and I'm gonna have to tap down <laughs> and kick. Oh my goodness. Knee and kick really focus. Pull in that core, knee, and kick. If you need something to hang on to, hang on to something, my friends. If you need to tap down, tap down. You're making this your own. You're doing what you can with it. And the next time it beeps, this is the last time it's gonna beep in this workout. Oh my goodness, what a good job you're doing. I'm actually finding that kick to be almost as difficult as the balance. Excellent job. Really keeping that core pulled in, thinking about how your balance comes all the way into the middle of your body. And that was it. What a fun time that was. Lots of nice bursts. Lots of good information for your brain today too. My friends, my friends, do not neglect the brain work part of this process. I tell you what, you can eat the right number of calories every single day. You can drink the right amount of water every single day. You can sleep well. You can exercise moderately. But if you don't know what you're thinking about weight, your weight loss journey, you might not find the success that you're looking for. When you notice what you're thinking about what you're doing, you will be so far, so far ahead of the game. Let's go ahead and open it up nice and wide. Ah, and then close it up, give yourself a big hug. Think something nice about yourself while you pat yourself on the back. I'm thinking nice things about you. I'm thinking that you did a great job today. I'm also thinking that here on screen, of course I have an extended cool down for you if you'd like a little bit more stretching. And, and if you wanna talk a little bit more about those five steps here on screen, I've got everything you need to know about weight loss at our age. My friends, thank you so much for working out with me today. Make sure you subscribe before you go and I'll see you tomorrow.